<sighs> there was a previous video where I organized this all into this roll format, which I still love so much. I can easily see every single fabric I have. And the point of that was so that I would not forget the fabric I have and make the mistake of continuing to buy new fabric to work with. We've got some lightweight mesh. We've got some satins. We've got some twills and cottons. We've got some spandexy, stretchy knit print gunmetal things, various faux leather interfacing lining fabrics, fancy fabrics is what I called this section, and then heavy warm stuff plus blue tool. Okay, we just posted, help us choose a fabric for the next video. We've got a few different categories to help us nail down the preferences. Julia's coming over in a moment, so let's see what you voted for. First, the people want lightweight fabric. This one, yeah, because the other one's all heavyweight, right? Mm -hmm. Next up, a preference for sheer. Oh, oh that's like my on. wedding dress tool, I think. <laughs> Still have some the strawberry. strawberry. <laughs> the next stipulation is matte. Oh. Obviously can't do this gunmetal thing. And then, light preference for solids. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye -bye. <laughs> <laughs> so little control <laughs> and slightly prefer that it is knit. Do you want to draw some ideas? Yeah. We have our drawings. Mine is a combination of big collars, balloon sleeves, everyday lingerie. Mm -hmm. I've come up with this and I'm going to make it in the eyelet fabric. What is your plan? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> kind of doing all like the cutouts and strappy. Um, details, doing a drape across the chest area, flared sleeves, which I really like, and then also I'm gonna do like the these godets on the hips. It's also gonna be in all white. I'm planning to use the white mesh fabric. Because I decided on that fabric, I was inspired by uh, Catherine Bowen, which is like a Toronto designer. The seam allowance is basically gonna like show through the mesh and oh. kind of create like piping. Uh, yeah, like kind of like a piping. Yes, I guess we will cut our fabric. <sighs> Let's go. If you've been watching my channel, you've seen us use this drafting kit before. I'm using the Lutterlow kit, which takes just one body measurement and turns it into a giant collection of patterns that they've developed. For my blouse, I picked a pattern with a fitted bodice and a collar, and I traced out a front, a back, and a collar piece. I skipped the sleeve because I want to do my own sleeve design. The front has a large dart to accommodate the bust, and for a drop shoulder effect, I extended the shoulder by 8 centimeters, and I also lowered the armpit by 5 centimeters for comfort so they have a new curve connecting them. Same with the back of the bodice, eight centimeters out, connecting to a five centimeters drop at the armhole. For a garter strap detail, I added this little extra bit on the front and the back that will hopefully come together once the darts are sewn shut. And here is how the collar pattern looked. At this point, I realized I would not have enough eyelet fabric, so I added this sheer floral fabric, which was also not enough, so looks like we're finishing all of my white cotton fabric today. While we measure and cut our fabric, I'm giving a quick shout out to this video sponsor, ThreadUp! If any of you haven't heard of ThreadUp, they are an online thrift and consignment store for your closet, your wallet, and the planet. As much as I love thrifting in person, with ThreadUp you get the thrill of the hunt, plus the added convenience of being able to search by size, by color, by brand, whatever you're interested in. They have great descriptions of the quality of the secondhand items and the original retail prices, which is always an exciting comparison. This is my third time maybe partnering with ThreadUp. I always love getting the package in the mail and with this haul, I feel like I got a lot of current style trends despite the fact that they're all secondhand items. I'll show you some of my favorites. First up, we have a classic little black dress. This is from Laundry by Shelly Siegel. It has this little cowl neck detail in the front. I love that it's like slightly shimmery because there's these little beads attached to it and the quality is so good. There's actually boning details in here that are helping it to have good structure and form. I feel very wedding ready, which is something I think that's gonna be happening more this summer. This dress, original retail, $208, but on ThreadUp, it was $44.99. Number two, I have been hunting for a perfect pair of 
khaki pants for so long. And in this case, searching by brand on ThreadUp worked out so well. These are Kowtow Khakis, which is a company that adheres to 100% certified fair trade organic clothing that is ethically and sustainably made. I really like that I can be picky about brands while thrifting. These were originally $285 and on ThreadUp, I got it for $34.99. Oh my gosh, this one was so unique. Here's a blouse by Cameo Collective. It's got bubble sleeves, it's got this waist wrap, it's got these slanted buttonholes, so many details and textures to enjoy. For how put together it feels, it also feels extremely relaxed. This blouse's original retail price, $175, and on ThreadUp, $32.99. I feel ready for business. Children's clothes is also perfect for thrift, and ta-da! I got this winter coat from Marla. <laughs> She's growing out of her old one and we still have a few more cold months ahead of us. Plus, I got it in a size that works for next winter too when she's walking. This coat is from Baby Gap and it was original retail price $68, but now $20.80 on ThreadUp. Finally, it is not a ThreadUp haul for me unless I shop through all the accessories. And in this haul, I got this lovely little white satchel. I feel like it's so versatile and very summer ready. You might've seen me already playing with this bag in my last video and I will try to style it with my finished piece when we get to the end of this video. This bag was original retail price $60, but on ThreadUp squeezed just under $25. She's $24.99 and I'm pretty sure I will enjoy it for many years. Check the link in the description if you want to see what's on ThreadUp right now and if you find anything you like, you can get up to 60% off your first order plus free shipping with my code WENDY. Does anyone else think of gum whenever they unwrap a new needle? Let's start with the collar. I've got four pieces, two in each hand of the collar. They've been cut so that the two are symmetrical. For the ruffle of the collar, the letter low kit said that I needed 170 centimeters. I purposefully tried to salvage all of the ruffled edge of the eyelet fabric as possible and I think I'm like on the line and it's just not good to be on the line with ruffled material. You know, a little more ruffle is always good. Okay, first, the ruffle is made up of three separate pieces so I just gotta join them together and make one long ruffle strip. It's always good to trim and press these seams open since they will be visible to the observant eye. Although I'm saying that and I literally sewed the ruffle together in two different joinery ways, so. <laughs> Here's the one joined perpendicular. This is not as ideal because it can get you a bit bulkier of a finish, but I'm trying to max out the fabric. And then here's the one joined on an angle. I have to trim this little doodad. This is a little less bulky, a little nicer of a joinery method. I got a left and a right on the collar, so this whole strip needs to be cut in half. I added a straight stitch along the top on the longest stitch length. I'm gonna use that to gather this up, so this is one meter. This is 64 centimeters, so I just wanna shrink this until it matches. I just hold on to one of the strings, give it a little tug. Cotton is just so cute like this. I took one of my collar pieces Pinned it right sides together with the ruffle. I'm gonna sandwich all the ruffle between these two layers. I've made my fabric calzones. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Over here on the edges, I turned it in twice with a straight stitch and I closed it off by doing a top stitch all the way around and at that opening using a little awl to shove in the excess fabric as I lock it in with the stitch. Julia's pattern pieces are much more complex to achieve her interlocking piping detail. I had a whole explanation of how these pieces work, but she actually redid her pattern at home. I'll let her explain. I ended up taking a long sleeve sweater of mine, using that as a basic block. So adding all the style lines and then making the godet as well. So let's cut out the fabric. I'm going to be sewing the front pieces together and the back pieces together. So my order of operations is to start by serging down this piece and down these two pieces. And then I'm going to serge it all together down here and then repeat it on the back side. So this is the front 
back and then the sleeves. The next step we're gonna do is sew along these sides. So, <laughs> the flare is like non-existent. I just wanted it fuller. This is the first one. <laughs> this is the second one. I'm scared. We got two symmetrical backs, two symmetrical fronts. I closed off all the darts. Typically, I just draw a line for where the seam is supposed to be for the darts. Then I try to pin through that line on both sides so it just naturally brings the seam in alignment. Sew it down from a straight stitch and it goes from a flat fabric now into one that's got a little shape, a little contour to match the body. And then the other good thing to do is to press the excess fabric towards the side of the body or away from the center. I thought that was all the prep I needed for the bodice, but then I realized with these like fancy little garter strap things, I think I do need to line it. So then I repeated everything in another layer of fabric and then I ran out of fabric. So in the spirit of not buying any more fabric for this project, <laughs> I just pulled out some satin. I gotta join the bodice together at the shoulders, right sides together and at the sides right sides together. Drop shoulder is definitely at the length I wanted. I feel like this at some point I would like to trim and reshape. So here's the sleeve. It's not as flared as I wanted it to be so I'm probably gonna add a godet just like on the side. We have a lining and we have a shell, which I've already attached one sleeve to. So the base of the sleeves, I decided to use this white floral fabric. I want it to be a balloon that's gathered along the top and along the bottom. And so I took this template from the Regency dress that I made and kind of, I don't know, massaged the line so that it became this balloon S-curve shape on the top, an S-curve shape on the bottom, but that's not all. In addition to the balloon sleeve, I wanted to add this ruffle detail just above the sleeve. Of course, you can always use a gathering foot for these, but doing the gathering stitches allows you to have the greatest possible control on how much it's gathered. And when I'm trying to fit this exactly into the sleeve hole size, I kind of need it to be flexible as I pin it in. I think this is roughly the length I need. I'm gonna bring the two ends right sides together and sew it closed with a straight stitch so it will be a complete loop. I did the same gathering stitch at the armhole of the sleeve. So here she is and I've also sewn the inner arm. I'm gonna pin everything together at the armhole. This right here is the armpit, this right here is the shoulder, and there's three layers in total. We have the outer shell, the ruffle trim and the sleeve. You can just sew with a straight stitch and hope everything catches and it's all good. Ta da! This is exactly the effect I was hoping for. I've got the shell and the lining right sides together. We're going to go across the entire neck hole, across the two fronts, join it together, and the part I'm dreading across all of the garter straps along the bottom. I can picture it working in my head, but I'm not sure if it's gonna work out in real life. Alrighty. The shell and the lining have been sewn together with a straight stitch all around the neck. Front opening every single strap to do. I remembered that this was my best opportunity to give a final assessment to the shape height opening of these curves that are in between the straps. I recall wanting the front one to be a little bit higher. What do you think? Did I make the right choice? Meanwhile, Julia has been hand sewing all of her seam details to lock them in place. She's adding a beautiful drape on the chest. She's finishing her shoulder straps. Julia really is doing the most and it's amazing. I successfully understitched my entire lining so it would look professional. I flipped everything right side out to see for the first time if it all looked good. And I poked and pressed all the edges to get them sharp and crisp. I'm scared to curse us by saying this, but I think we are almost done. Hey, Julie, help me buy this hook and eye tape. I'm gonna use this to close the entire front, which combined with the garter straps was just meant to evoke a little bit more of that like 
lingerie inspiration. Just gonna sew them to the front opening and try to make sure they all line up horizontally because we don't want to go askew at this point in the game. Ooh, I think this turned out so good! You can afford to start at any height really on the hook side because this will become the anchor for making sure you get the other side correct. So I'm gonna go in with a straight stitch really close to the edge, just try to keep it as neat as possible. And then I'm tucking away the raw ends, folding it over and sealing it down with a straight stitch. I'm just gonna blanket stitch all the fabric together around the armhole. I know someday, someday my day will come where I will learn how to do all of this inner lining thing properly, but I've already crossed many bridges to get to this point. And when I'm ready, I will cross that next one. Last night, I finished off the sleeves by encasing an elastic inside. On the back side of the collar, I sewed the two crescents together. And on the front, I added a little snap. Let me just get this adjusted for us. I did it! Didn't buy any new fabric. Cleared way for more fabric to enter the home. I can't believe how much this looks like what I drew. I've never drawn something with so much complexity and pulled it off so accurately. I feel like I proved to myself how many little skills I've been picking up over the last few years. I can't believe I basically freehanded these sleeves and they turned out the correct length and floofiness. I can't believe I added this hook and eye closure strip in the front and it looks so smooth. I can't believe I understitched the whole thing without batting an eye. Literally a year ago, I was just starting to get okay with understitching. If you guys love this fabric challenge, please let us know in the comments. Let's go see Julia. I hope you guys are as amazed as I am by what Julia has sewn. To be honest, we were joking that if the Olympic figure skating committee would like to contact us for fits, we would be down. Don't forget to open the link in the description to shop ThreadUp right now. You can get up to 60% off your first order and free shipping with my code WENDY. So I hope you find something you love. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.